Hello, this is National Chess Master R. Rats to continue my video series at chess.com of the correspondence team match played between my video lessons group and the team from Carpe Diem. And this was done on board 172 with 210 boards, about 1600 versus uh, high 1400s. And it's unfortunate uh, for White uh, from Carpe Diem, he was probably winning both games, but he lost them both on time. So it's an advantage of getting a premium membership. Uh, you, you won't time out on your games for some reason you don't have internet access you know mother nature can strike a tornado a hurricane a typhoon um, anything can go wrong so uh, but let's have a look at the games and it features one of these things that I'm frowning on so hopefully our man Raider 53 takes note of my advice when I give it and watches the other videos where I'm really critical of it you'll see what I mean in a moment and here it comes People that move their rook pawns up. This is the worst possible thing you can do in the opening. You don't care if white puts a piece on g5, okay? You don't. A knight or a bishop. You're not going to get forked on f7. You're not going to get your You don't have to worry about a knight getting pinned. You can defend that right, by actively developing pieces. Moving these rook pawns is bad. You weaken your king side. You don't develop a piece, okay? Uh, white does the same thing, but at least he does it with tempo. And... Now, the bishops are exchanged, and uh, now you can see one reason you had to exchange the bishop, because you can't really put the bishop back on g6. You're going to mess up your pawn structure. So there's a reason right there. Now, black panics again. He says, oh my goodness, he's threatening queen check. Well, you, you can cover that fine in a lot of ways. How about, how about developing your knight? Uh, or you might not want to develop the queen here. You might run into bishop, bishop here, but... but uh, what does black do? He moves his other rook pawn. This is not good. Okay, I, I, I'm mystified as to how this arises. Uh, this the popularity of this move among players is uh, it, it's so so prevalent. I see it in games played against with 800 ratings, 1,000 ratings. I'm even seeing it up in the 15 and 1600s. I'm guaranteeing you, you won't find a book written by any reputable author that recommends putting your rook pawns to keep up one square to keep pieces out of the in descriptive notation the knight five square nobody re recommends this uh, I, I've determined that this is a self uh, learned strategy I mean when I learned the game of chess I moved my rook pawn on the first move pawn to king rook four or queen rook four I don't remember and I brought my rook out to rook three or h3 and then I would slide it over to the left side of the board and attack something that my opponent had moved and you know I was playing absolute beginners like myself and and they would put pieces where I could take them and I happily took them that's how I won my games I didn't understand strategy I was a kid okay I didn't have any training whatsoever other than but I knew how to play and I knew how to attack pieces and I knew how to capture pieces and that's what I did but that was my strategy I developed this is the strategy you guys have developed because what's happened is somebody's forked you with a knight on your bishops on your bishop two square his bishop seven square You've got your, or a bishop's come down there and taken taken your f pawn, uh, or you've had an annoying pin on your knight that that maybe you ended up losing a piece or something. So you've taken the liberty of yourself to construct a strategy to keep your opponent out of those squares. All your opponent has to do is break the position open, and you're toast. Okay. Uh, as it turns out, we'll see this h6 move by Black should have cost him the game. And that will become apparent later. And how many games have... Uh, I just made a video a couple of videos back. I don't... Um, I recommend you watch all my videos where moving that rook... White, white moving that rook pawn up ended up costing them a piece. I've had games where people have just set up a sacrifice on king rook six by a bishop and then won the game. These moves are bad. Okay? And I, I don't take it personal. I'm not nothing against you. You just didn't learn right. I'm telling you the right way. Okay? You don't want to do it. You want to develop your pieces. Get your pieces to active squares where they can construct uh, uh, threats. Okay? You not you don't play defense uh, by by moving your rook pawns up. Okay? This is not how you play effective chess. End of rant. But guess what? It's going to happen in the next game, too. Oh, oh, look! White's doing the same thing. Now, in this case, what's bad about this move? Well, he's putting a pawn on the same color of his bishop. Okay, so that in itself is bad. And what was what was white gonna, black going to put on b4? 
Nothing! You want to stick a bishop there? What's it doing? Ugh. No, the bishop belongs on e7. Okay, maybe d6. Uh, it doesn't even have a knight on c6 to get to b4. You know, look at this. Both sides have moved their rook pawns up. Wasted, wasted moves, weakened their positions. Just, ugh. I can't believe it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I guess I can believe anything I've seen about everything. Anyway, they both continue their development. That, now white puts another pawn on the color of his bishop. And those that have seen my videos where I've discussed the minority attack, we now have the classical minority attack in action. It can happen out of a Karakhan. It can happen out of a Queen's Gambit decline, the exchange variation. In that case, white has the queen side minority attack. In this situation, black does. Okay, divide the board in half. King side versus queen side. On the queen side, black has three pawns, white has four. On the king side, white has three pawns, black has four. White has the minority of pawns on the king side. Black has the minority of pawns on the queen side. Both sides are supposed to conduct minority attacks with their pawns. In effect, what black is supposed to do, the strategy is, move this pawn up to b5, b4 with, with preparation. Then one of two things will happen. If white ever takes on b4 with a c pawn, white gets an isolated pawn on d4, a weakness. If he doesn't take, uh, white will take, or black will take on c3, and if he takes back with a piece, there's your isolated pawn. If he takes back with a pawn, uh, there's a target, a backward pawn on the open file. Now, if you play for these strategies when you have the minority attack, chances are your opponent may not, and you'll end up uh, pulling your strategy off. Uh, I've talked about a game I played 30 years ago where, uh, with white, I had the uh, minority attack going with the queen's gambit, and my opponent didn't, I played, all I did, I didn't do any, pull any rabbit out of my hat, come up with any brilliant, subtle, grandmaster type move that's 20 moves deep, or, you know, that would make Magnus Carlsen beam with the light, that I, why didn't I think of that? Didn't do anything other than do my minority attack. My opponent didn't do what he was supposed to do, which I'll explain in just a moment. He started dancing around with his pieces, trying to create threats on against my king. Those were easily dealt with, and he ended up uh, overextending himself and lost a piece. So all I did was do what I was supposed to do. Now, what's White supposed to do? Well, White's supposed to do his own minority attack. He's supposed to play for pawn to f5 with the exact same thing that I just showed you on the other side of the board. If Black takes on f5, Black has an isolated pawn on d5. If Black doesn't, White takes on e6, and White ends, Black ends up with a backward pawn on the open file. That's what you're supposed to do. Will they do it? Let's see. Well, black's off to a start, and probably it would be a good idea for to keep the minor piece on the board. Think about maybe knight e8, uh, because then this knight can do some fun maneuvering. He can go to d6 and maybe c4, uh, but he lets it be traded, and it, here it comes. But you see, this is a mistake, and now the weakness that black created on by playing h6 comes to front. Uh, the pawn on g7 is overworked. It's defending a bishop and it's defending a pawn. And white bags a pawn and white has a strategically winning game. Although the fact that white's put his pawns on the color of his bishop here uh, don't help him, but he, he, he carefully maneuvers. And, I mean, there's always different ways to play it, but uh, essentially uh, white has a, a clear advantage here. Now white... Uh, black has some play. His pawns aren't weak at all. They're on the opposite color of his bishop. So it's a good bishop versus a bad bishop, but unfortunately you're pawned down. So black has some play, but not enough. And slowly but surely, white starts improving his position. Even though his pawns are going on the color of his bishop, you'll see he does the right maneuvering. I don't think white sh black should have taken that, but he did. Uh, now the rook is kind of stuck there. It's not doing much. It's basically... Uh, tying up the bishop, you know, black's down the exchange and the rest of the board, okay? Uh, now, there's you got the backward pawn for you, but you're not poised to attack it. Backward pawn on the open file. But there's an open D file, or A file, who can get to it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, white wants to open up the H file. Black stops that. Now white wants the A file. Black decides he wants it, but white gets there first. White's clear, white has the advantage now. And black is just defending, and, and uh, white slowly starts improving his position. And here, uh, white missed uh, a nice continuation. Bishop f2 Get, gets the rook out of the bishop out of danger, and the threat is to put it on h4, pinning this. And, and uh, 
uh, going into a very favorable ending. Let's let's take a look. Bishop f2. What are you going to play for? Uh, for um, for black. Okay, you can't move the bishop. Okay, let's let's try the king move. I think you, I think white can play this move. Watch this. Take take check. Now you have to come back. Oops, I went the wrong way. Sorry. Uh, now let's see. Bishop takes. King takes. Now this king is penetrating. Uh, it looks like black is going to win the or white's going to win this king and pawn ending. Black doesn't have any pawn moves. Well, he can play f6, but he's going to get surrounded. Uh, see, now you're going to lose this pawn on f on f6 and with it the game. And the alternative is to move the king. And if you come up here, there goes that pawn. You know, just basically a winning game. So what does poor white black do against bishop f2? Uh, you can't move the king. You can't move the bishop. You can't move a pawn. That means move your rook. Okay, we're going to put the rook. Let's let's go attack this guy. Okay, now I'm going to go pin you. Well, it looks like we're going to do something similar to we did before. That's pretty much forced. Now take take and let's see I think I think uh, uh, white's going to win this too let's see uh, well maybe not maybe I've done it wrong let's see just had a second thought there let's see you have to come back uh, let's see oh duh check <laughs> there it is game over boom uh, so, but White's still, still better. He checked first with the, uh, pawn. And there's really not much Black can do here. He's, now he's starting to lose pawns. His pawns are weak. And, uh, this point, uh, White lost on time in a winning position. I mean, just Rook takes and, and White has his way. So, Lucky win for our team, but uh, the, the strategy I suggested will certainly help that, help avoid that. Now let's look at the other game they played. Uh, flip board. Okay. And watch. Here it comes. Here it comes. Blunder. Okay. Not picking on you again, Raider, but why? What? What's wrong with developing a piece? Why do you need to keep him out? You don't. You need to get your pieces out. Bishop d6. He can't take the pawn. Well, yeah, no, he can't take it. Uh, I was thinking the d file was open. It's one of those tricks where you take, you take with the knight, the queen takes, and you check and win the queen. But I'm, look, I'm missing this pawn. Okay, uh, just develop a piece. Bishop d3. Get ready to castle. Bring out your other bishop. You don't need to move this this a pawn. But there it goes. And what does black do? A6, kabang! Why? You know, develop your pieces. Th these brook pawn moves don't do either side any good. Okay? But they can both afford, black could afford the luxury because white wasted a tempo. Now he got the, now he got the pin. There's H6. And now here I'm surprised white didn't play H3 because it seems to fit what he would do. Uh, but he doesn't. He puts the bishop here immediately. Now uh, black fix him, fixes him with the isolated queen pawn, but that's okay. Now the, now the knight comes here. Now you can't play h3. Well, you could, but you're not going to be able to preserve it. You're going to get uh, your, your f capture away from the center and open up this diagonal, maybe expose the king. But white's going to do that anyway here in a moment. You will see. Normally, I would take with the h pawn. Uh, I've seen some people take with the F pawn. And I guess it's okay in this situation, but but White doesn't really have a lot of uh, a lot to look forward to. Uh, his pawn's one drawback with taking with the F pawn is this pawn became isolated, and the position's opening up, which will favor the bishops, the black bishops in this case. Uh, also, there's a direct line uh, of attack against the White King. I believe Black is getting the better game here. And uh, black should be maybe trying to gang up on e5, but it's weak. It's not going anywhere. Uh, 
but here it's interesting uh, white missed a white misses a forced win here right here uh, with rook takes this this wins by force what can what can uh, what can black do the threat is rook checkmate okay that's the threat what does black do well he can't play rook g8 you don't even need the queen to help out that's a mate well no you do need the queen to help out okay uh, you have if you push the h pawn it's mate if you use the bishop as a decoy uh, you know if anything you're just losing a piece okay or let's see let's look at it see I mean what's wrong with taking this right but this might be stronger might be let's see now let's pile up on it uh, f5 hello queen uh, now I'm on this bishop I'm on this bishop you know white wins so did you move quick I hope not I mean I hope that you analyzed and just didn't see it but your your analysis will get better tonight if when you consider all your active moves threats captures and checks uh, because rook takes is a capture it also has a threat oh well, not yet let's see uh, so this is where rook takes f6 I think does black in uh, I think he could might have been able to he might have been able to do it in this position too. I think this this wins as well, unless I'm missing some crazy defense that Black had. Let's see. I think this wins too. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure I'm right here. I could be wrong. Let's see. Check. Maybe maybe this is a defense. Although maybe maybe that'll defend a little better. But you still want to. But I know rook takes f6 was crushing. But he didn't play it. Uh, he took, ended up taking this over here. And now black is wiggling out of it. And white's pressure is gone. Now the queen's come off. And black actually has the better pawn structure. White could create an outside pass pawn, but black already has a pass pawn. And now he finds the right square, but a little too late and now the black rooks actually start doing a better job than the white rooks and the white queen's hide pawns are weak well look at this it's backing things up on its own come on chess.com get version three out please okay and white's kind of stuck and <laughs> look it's trying to back things up again i'm not hitting anything it's just doing it on its own see there it does it again i didn't touch anything <laughs> I'm not touching a thing. It's just doing this on its own. Crazy. Okay, guarding the two pawns. Please undouble my pawns. No, thank you. <laughs> now it's trying to move things again. Uh, but, you know, the game's close to even, but Black has is going to end up with the better rooks here. When is he going to double them? Been waiting for that to happen for a while. Now Black gets a more advanced pass pawn. H3 is weak. A3 is weak. So those rook pawns, you know, the pawns were better off back on the original squares. Okay, it's one another reason why you don't want to run your rook pawns up. Uh, now the black rook's penetrating to the third rank. Rook g3 is a threat, followed by doubling rooks on the sixth rank. Uh, white doesn't want any part of that. Off come a set of rooks. And black returns to the uh, third rank. And goes to the eighth rank now it's time to activate the king white shuts it off attacks a pawn and black white can't defend it so black has now won a pawn <coughs> he's up a pawn and uh, eventually he will have a pass pawn on the queen side too but here's where black misfires uh, well not just yet let's see Not just yet. Okay. Now that forces the king over here. But yeah, here's the point where where uh, where black misfires. 
it's natural to not want to lose this pawn. You know, you look at these these two pawns being potentially powerful, but they're a long way from queening. Black misfires with king f6, deactivating his king. King e4 is crushing. Uh, what can poor white do? Well, let's go take the pawn. Okay, but now this this king and this pawn are very, very active, along with this rook. Uh, this pawn is far more serious than these two pawns are. And it takes twice as long to run two pawns as it does to run one pawn. So uh, let's let's start by giving a check and drive the king back. Okay, now we're going to activate this king. Now we've got all, all kinds of potential threats. What are you going to do? Run your pawn? Okay, fine. I'm going to go threat and checkmate. You don't have time to run your pawn. you got to save your king. Now guess what? I'm threatening mate again. And you you don't really have a good move here. Uh, if if you move your king, I'm checking. So you pretty much have to move your rook. Where are you going to put it? Here? Now, if anything, I can play rook check, rook back, rook takes, king takes, king here. There goes your pawn, but mine's coming here faster, and it's going in with check. And voila, black wins. Okay, activate your king when you can. So you had a you had a simple win here. Uh, let's back it up to where he uh, missed that. Let's try to find it here in the notes. Let's see. Uh, rook c5 check. He played king f6, but black is still for choice. It's just not as clear. Whoops, what's it doing? Eh. Okay, <laughs> don't do that. It keeps moving forward. I'm not hitting things. Okay, check. He backs the king up. Check. He backs the king up again. Now, the king's not doing him much good back there. But at least he's got another pawn. But unfortunately, the rook's in front of the pawn. You want your rook behind past pawns. But black is still for choice here. And at this point, uh, black ran out of time. Uh, most likely should win this with careful play, but you're going to have to. Black's going to have to use his king this time, and don't worry about this pawn. Don't worry about losing it. Get your king into f3, and you'll win just like I said. So hopefully this helped Raider 53. You know you you theoretically had two lost games, but you won them both. You stuck around to play. It's part of the rules. You have to make a move every three days, and if you don't log into Chess.com, what happens? You lose. Okay, but hopefully this helps you get better. But if you get rid of those rook pawn moves out of your game, um, your your game will be a lot better because you won't get a position that's harder to, to, to win from or to get any kind of advantage from. Two developing moves, it's like, just imagine this, you're in a 100-yard dash race and you give your, your opponents a 20-yard head start, okay? That's what moving your rook pawns does or backs you backs you up 20 yards. It's a lot harder to win when you're when you back yourself into a corner. But if you don't push those rook pawns and develop pieces instead, you'll be surprised what kind of results you'll get. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Take care.